In this video, we're looking at the LZX industry's angles. And I'm breaking with tradition a little bit here because this patch was just so much fun I had to record it. Angles is a simple module, but can add a ton of complexity to a patch. It offers a huge bank of outputs, all generated from a set of basic ramps. You can also break the connection to the internal ramps and input other sources, like the dual shape generator. So we'll get to the ins and outs of how this module actually works, but off the bat I wanted to demonstrate how you can use its multiple outputs to take a couple simple image generators like a dual oscillator and a dual shape and make really interesting organic patterns and shapes. So I'm going to unpatch all this and we'll start from scratch and try to show you just a few of the tricks this very awesome module has up its sleeves. At its core, Angles is a ramp generator. There are four basic ramp shapes, horizontal and vertical and inversions of each, and then these flow down into these different combinations of outputs. You can see the images clearly denote what we're going to get. So if I just plug one of these outputs, you can see we've got a slightly angled diagonal. And we could change the angle of that diagonal by plugging into each of these different outputs. So one really simple way to get started with angles is to just plug in different color channels for each of these outputs. And you can get some really nice RGB gradients. And just playing around with different examples. See what you got here. And of course, you can also just plug into the basic gradient shapes. So that's just our main ramp output, ramp output, inverted, inverted. And you can also break these input connections. So I could take an output from a dual shape generator into this. This is going to then replace my horizontal ramp. So then I'll get something much more complex out of here. And again, we have a whole series of variations. So let's take two outputs from our dual shape generator into just two of the inputs on angles, and we'll use the internal ramps for some others. And let's try to get some nice looking gradients. One of the really fun things with this module is you could just kind of patch around. There is a rhyme and reason to everything, but you can just have a lot of fun swapping inputs, swapping outputs. Put that into there, into there. And while the module doesn't have any CV inputs of its own, we can use processing modules to generate animated type effects. So I'm going to take my outputs from the dual shape and I'm going to put them through processing modules. So now we can start to animate these effects here. I'll just patch in two LFOs. So now we're starting to get some movement on these gradients. And we could really just keep taking outputs from this forever and plugging them into different channels here. and start to get some really nice, sophisticated color blends of these gradients. And of course, we could also start to key these things. So I'm just going to take some of these outputs, just three of them, and we'll throw them into a keyer. And 
And so now we'll start to get some harder edged shapes. This is where this really gets to be fun, in my opinion. And so now we can look at a whole bunch of different angles. So this is just a really nice, simple way to add a lot of variation to a patch. You could dramatically expand the possibilities of a module like a dual shape generator. And of course, even without using the dual shape generator, just angles on itself is still capable of producing a very nice, varied range of shapes and patterns. So now let's look at how we can use angles as a modulation source. So for this next patch, I'm gonna use angles to modulate both channels of a dual oscillator. I'm keeping this basic setup the same just because I think that a keychain into a matrix mixer is a really good way to see what this module is doing. So to begin, I'm gonna take both outputs of the dual oscillator. I'm gonna put them both into one channel of a keychain, and I'm gonna set these channels both the same so that we'll Get more or less the same type of shape here from all three color channels, at least for now. And let me lock that so we can see what's going on. So here we just have a nice grid. These are two sine waves just being keyed together and that's creating those diamond shapes. I'm gonna center out these frequency controls too. There we go. So now let's look at using angles to modulate both of these oscillators. So as you can see, starting to get some nice stuff there, modulating just the horizontal bar. And here you need to be careful which ones you use some will have more of an effect than others. So now you can see they're kind of getting squished up on the bottom. We can go into the frequency on the second channel. And you can see what's happening here. So that it's starting to kind of curve. And that's based on that angle. So if we change to a different angle, we're going to get a slightly different curve. So again, this just gives us a lot of different stuff to play with here. So now I'm gonna take this frequency CV input. I'm gonna plug in the crossfader on a pendulum. And I'm gonna take two opposing angles. So we'll try from this one and from this one. And what we're gonna do is use the manual crossfader in here to just crossfade in between those two angles. So now we get something super cool where we can kind of switch it from angle one to angle two. And of course we can cross fade anywhere in between. And I can add the LFO in to start to do that for me. And of course, if I switch through these different angles. We start to get a lot of different possibilities. Yeah, let me just take that out again so you could just see the plane crossfading. So this is pretty cool. To make this a little bit more interesting, we can start to introduce other angles into the different CV controls on our keychain channels so we don't have something quite so monochrome. 
So let's try that one. There we got some blinds. And we can take even more angle channels and throw them into different color channels. And let's add that LFO back in. We could just play with all our ranges. And then you could just start switching different outputs and uh, see what happens. You know, that's one of the joys of this module. And of course, at any time, you can go and patch in something else just to see what happens. So we can break some of these input connections and start to get some real wiggly stuff going on. So this is a nice, fun module to add a lot of variety to any patch. So we're starting to get these heart shapes, which I don't know how we would create otherwise without some kind of module like this. And finally, let's just take this oscillator and unsync it. So we get a little additional movement. And there you go. One thing I find that visually adds a lot of interest to a patch is lots of different variation. When you're mostly working with just video oscillators and shape generators, things can start to feel really static really quickly. Angles just gives you a whole bunch of variation that you could plug into all different parts of your patch. And so it's just a lot of fun to go in and try different things. Maybe you can reset one of the oscillators at a certain point, and that's gonna give you just some more variation. And I gotta say, it really is just a lot of fun. So in our last patch, we'll look at one last use of angles, which is using it to create variations of slower modulation sources. So for this last patch, we're gonna try something a little bit different. We're gonna use the angles to process some simple modulation sources to get a bunch of different variations of those modulation sources. So to start, I have the same basic uh, setup with a keychain and a matrix mixer. I'm just gonna take two sine outputs from my dual oscillator, and I'm gonna just add them together to create a really simple shape that we can key. So let's look at this. All right, so we just have some really nice circles. And now what I wanna do is add some CV to this keyer. So I could just use a pendulum here so you can see what that's gonna do. And that's gonna create these slightly different shapes. Now that's all well and good. I've got two LFOs and that's really nice. But one thing I love is lots and lots of modulation sources. Um, and if you've seen my videos before, you know that my favorite types of modulation sources are ones that are related to each other. It gives a nice organic flow to the entire patch. So I'm gonna take these two LFOs and I'm gonna put them in two two channels on angles. Oops, sorry, I used the wrong, uh, those are the outputs. These are the inputs. So now if I take one of these, put it into my CV control, I'm gonna get an interesting combination of the two of these. Now what's really neat is if I go into different 
input or different outputs, you can see the color channels are giving me different types of blends. So I'm getting just slightly different variations of that same LFO. Let me slow these both down so you can really see that. So you can see the different color channels are kind of doing just a slightly different thing. And the closer the angles are to each other, the closer your CVs are gonna be. So if I move this to something very different, you're gonna see that that color separation gets more dramatic versus here where it's just very, very subtle. Of course, there's no reason you couldn't use these other two channels, but for now, for simplicity, let's just stick to these two. We'll see where we get. So then we can take another one and go into our third CV. And so now we have all three of these color channels being modulated by these slight variations on these same two LFOs. And of course, I could also start to get all these other inputs involved. So we can pull in yet another LFO. And we could even pull in, actually I'm gonna use that one here. And we could even pull in something like a shape to really get bizarre. And so now we've got 24 unique modulation outputs from just a few simple modulators. Let's see what if I go into the reset on one of these, maybe, no, yeah. And the more complicated your patch is, the more places you have to put these. But we could also just start going into color channels, maybe subtractive. We could just start to have a lot of fun. So hopefully that gives you some idea of how to get started with your LZX Industries angles. I can't overstate what a joy it is to have this many possible outputs coming from a few simple input sources. Whether you're using it to modulate other things or to generate images all on its own, it's a really fun and efficient way to add a lot of sophistication to a patch. Having so much complexity at your fingertips really helps, especially when you're trying to make very organic seeming patches. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave any questions in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.